Welcome to Kids Quest. I'm so glad that you joined us again today. We are here in one of my favorite places out in God's creation. I love to explore God's creation and to look at what he has made. And God's creation tells me about my amazing and wonderful creator God. That's today's Bible point. God is the creator king. Say it with me. God is the creator king. Look at this beautiful landscape. God created this hill and the valley below, the forest and all the plants and animals that are in it. God created the whole universe and everything in it, including you and me. God made you and he loves you. Say today's Bible point again with me. God is the creator king. God is the king because he made everything and it all belongs to him. God rules over his creation with wisdom, power, and love. God is the creator king. The forests and fields around here are full of so many fascinating animals that God has made. One of my favorite Bible verses is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 24, and it says, How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. I have seen a lot of God's creatures as I've been exploring the woods, the fields, and the ponds around here. So what I've done is I've prepared a little game for you. I'm going to give you three clues about each animal and you need to see if you can guess what the animal is. Are you ready? Let's play. This animal scampers and climbs, eats berries, nuts, and seeds, and it has stripes. It's a chipmunk. I wonder if any of you have these little creatures running around your backyard. This animal lives in the water. It is green or brown and it hops. It's a frog. Did you guess it right? This animal has brown fur. It has a white tail and males have antlers. It's a white-tailed deer. Have you ever seen one of these in the forest? This creature has wings. Some of its feathers are red and it makes big holes in the trunks of trees. It's a woodpecker. My family and I heard and then spotted one of these while we were out hiking this spring. This animal cannot climb trees. Its babies are called pups or kits and it has reddish orange fur. It's a beautiful red fox. Well, that's the end of our animal riddles. How did you do? I have something else I want to show you. Hey kids, I'm out here exploring God's amazing creation and uh, I found this really cool pond and I just have to show you what I found in it. Take a look at this. Do you know what that is? That is, I'm pretty sure, a snapping turtle. Isn't it cool? Look at its shell. And then over here, right beside it, is, can you see it? A little frog. We have an amazing and wise creator and all of his creation shows his greatness and glory. Look at all this really tall grass. Boy, it sure has sprung up quickly and it reminds me of last week's Bible verse. Why don't you try to say last week's verse with me? The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Isaiah 40 verse 8. Last week, we learned the Bible point the Bible is true and trustworthy. 
God gave us his true word, the Bible, so that we could know him. Do any of you know the name of the very first book in the Bible? It's called Genesis. And when I open the Bible up to the very first book, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, this is what we read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, verse 1. This verse tells us what happened at the very beginning. At the beginning of time when our world first came into being. And this verse tells us about God. God existed even before our world began, before time began. God is eternal. That means that God has no beginning and he will have no ending. No one created God. He has always been. And God has so much power that he created the heavens and the earth. Now, while I was thinking about creation and God creating everything, I was also thinking about chocolate chip cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies, don't you? They taste so good, especially when they just come out of the oven and the chocolate is still melty. So I thought I would try my hand at doing some creating. I brought this plate with me and I'll set it here and I'd like to try to create some cookies. Would you like to watch me? All right, here I go. Let there be cookies. Hmm, that didn't work very well, did it? Maybe I didn't say it loud enough. I'll try again. Let there be cookies. Still didn't work. Maybe I need a bit of help. Why don't you try? to say it with me. Are you ready? Let's do it together. Let there be cookies. This really isn't working. Why do you think it's not working? Well, God is the only one who can create something out of nothing. If you or I want to create something, we need supplies and materials. We need to take the things that God has made and use them to create something. To create chocolate chip cookies, I would need to get flour from the grain that God has created that grows. I would also need to take some eggs from chickens, some butter that comes from cow milk or goat milk, and of course, some chocolate that comes from cocoa beans. And I would need to put it all together in just the right way in order to bake some chocolate chip cookies. But God is not like that. When God created our world, he did not need any materials or supplies. God created everything out of nothing. And he created it all by just speaking. What an amazing creator God we have. Now here's a plate of chocolate chip cookies. My daughter Elise baked these using ingredients from many things that God has made. And mmm, they are delicious. Let's practice saying this Bible verse together. I made up a little rhythm to help you remember it. It goes like this. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 1. Let's try that again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 1. Only an amazing creator could design the complex and carefully ordered world that we live in. Our amazing God created the wonders of our world so that people could see them and could know him, their creator. Today, we are going to hear the story of how God created this amazing world. Say the Bible point with me one more time before we get started. God is the Creator King. When God first made the world, emptiness and darkness were everywhere. You could see what it might have been like by closing your eyes and covering them with your hand. But then, 
God, the Creator King, spoke some words into the dark emptiness. He said, Let there be light, and light appeared. You can open your eyes now. Only God could do that. The light didn't come by chance. God didn't need materials or supplies to make light. God spoke, and the light appeared out of nothing. The Bible says God was pleased with the light. He called it good. God didn't stop there. He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. What do you think he called the darkness? Yes, he called it night. On the first day of creation, God made light and created day and night. And God saw that it was good. God has so much power. On the second day of creation, he just spoke and the sky went into place and the oceans went into place too. God said, it is good. But the earth was still a long way from being completed. On the third day, God created the land and plants that grow. Can you think of some plants that God made? God made trees of all kinds palm trees, maple trees, evergreen trees, and fruit trees, growing things like delicious apples, peaches, oranges. God made the flowers and vegetables. What is your favorite plant that God made? What do you think God said at the end of day three? He said, it is good. God's creation of the land and plants shows his great love and care for people. Did you know we couldn't live on earth without plants? Plants create oxygen, which people need to breathe. Take a deep breath in. When you breathed in, you were breathing oxygen made by plants. Okay, now breathe out. You just breathed out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is poisonous to people if you breathe in too much of it. But plants need carbon dioxide to live. God lovingly designed plants that way. On day four of creation, God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of sky to separate the day from night. The sun shone by day and the moon by night. God also made the stars. Guess how many stars there are in our Milky Way galaxy? There are over 100 billion. Guess how many galaxies there are? There are over 100 billion galaxies too. That means the total number of stars is over 100 billion times 100 billion. And yet the Bible says that God calls the stars by name. Psalm 147 verse 4 says, He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. God made the planets and placed them in their exact orbits. The planets in our solar system have stayed in place for thousands and thousands of years. They never spin out of orbit or crash into each other. When some people look at the sun, moon, and stars, they talk about how big and beautiful those things are. But instead of worshiping God for who he is and appreciating what he has done, they worship the stars, sun, and moon instead. God didn't create those things for us to worship them. He created them so we could look at them and worship him as the one true God. God created all the wonders of our universe so people could know him and worship him. On day five, God started to fill the brand new world he had made. God filled the water with animals. Can you name some of the animals that live in water? Things like fish, an octopus, whale, stingrays. There's so many amazing creatures that live in the waters on our earth. 
I'm going to tell you about one creature God made on day five so that you can see how wonderful our Creator God is. You may have seen clownfish before. They are little fish with bright colors and stripes that live in the ocean. Clownfish are small and need protection. A sea anemone is a great hiding place for them. But the sea anemone has stinging tentacles on it that hurt fish. Our all-wise God made the clownfish in a way that whenever it bumps up against the stinging sea anemone, a mucus coating forms on its body to protect it. Once that happens, the clownfish can dive in and out of the anemone as much as it wants. Only God could create something as wonderful as an anemone and a clownfish and give the clownfish exactly what it needs to live safely in the ocean. God also filled the sky with birds. By the end of the fifth day, the sky and the seas were filled with life. And what did God say at the end of the day? God said, it is good. On the sixth day, God made all the rest of the animals. On the count of three, shout out your favorite animal. One, two, three. Otters! Did you know God made the dinosaurs? He did. Dinosaurs were animals just like all the other land animals. We can see God's design in the amazing animals that he created to fill our earth. Let's say our Bible point together one more time. God is the creator king. But God wasn't finished creating yet. He was going to make the most special creation of all. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27 tell us this. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God made the very first man, Adam, from the dust of the ground. God breathed into Adam the breath of life and Adam began to live. Adam was different from all the other creatures God made because Adam was made in God's image. That means people are much more than an animal. God thinks and plans and works. People can also do those things. They can design and make things that have never been made before. People can't create something out of nothing like God did, but they can make new things from what God has given them. There is one other important way that people are different from animals. People can talk with God. They can know and worship him in a way animals never could. The very reason God made people was to love and worship him. Because God loved Adam, he did something very special for him. God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. Then God took a rib from Adam's side. And from the rib, God made a woman and brought her to Adam to be his wife. Adam named her Eve. Both Adam and Eve were created in God's image. God blessed them and put them in charge of the rest of creation. Everything was perfect, but it wouldn't stay that way. The time would come when the man and woman God created would choose to disobey him. They would sin. Their sin brought punishment upon the whole world. But God had a plan. And right after they sinned, he promised to send a savior. Many, many years after he created mankind, God in his great love sent his own son to save his disobedient people from their sin. How great God's love is. This was all a part of God's plan even when he created the world. In six days, God created our world and everything in it. When he was finished, God looked at his work. 
God saw everything he had created, and it was very good. On the seventh day, God rested from his work. God did not rest because he was tired. He rested because his work was finished, and he was satisfied with it. When you hear other stories about how people think the world began, remember what the Bible says. You have a wonderful Creator King who knows you and loves you. Knowing that God made our beautiful world and everything in it just by speaking should make us say, Wow! God is an amazing and wonderful Creator. It should make us want to worship God. To worship means to tell and to show God with our lives how great and how wonderful He is. God is the only one who is worthy of worship. He is the only true God, the one who made us, who made everything in our universe, and the one who rules over us as a good and a wise and a loving King. We worship God for being eternal, we worship God for his wisdom and his power, for his love. We worship God by praying to him. We worship him by singing songs of praise. We worship God as we thank him for things that we see or things he provides for us as we go through our day. And we worship God by serving him gladly with our lives. As you go through your week, and as you see the amazing things that God has made all around you, remember him, our good and wise Creator King. Remember him and worship him with your words and with your life. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, you are so great. You are our wise, our good, our powerful. Creator King, and we thank you for creating this amazing world, for all the wonderful animals and creatures and plants in it, and thank you for making us. Thank you for making us so that we can know you and trust you and love you. And help us to worship you with our words and with our lives, because you are so worthy of worship. Amen. Well, that's it for Kids Quest this week. Hope to see you next time at Kids Quest Online.